Hey guys, this is Frank Cox. Hey, I'm really excited today to talk to you. Um, we've got a new episode here, uh, episode 16, where today we're going to talk about baffle plates. You're listening to the Barbecue Culture Podcast. Hey guys, top of the morning to you. Sitting outside in my boat in the yard barn here. <laughs> I just felt like sitting out here this morning. It's a beautiful summer morning, and I can't believe how, how nice and cool it is outside. It's probably in the low 70s right now, and uh, it feels good outside. So I decided, why not go out and sit in the boat and record this podcast? So, well, hey, today we're going to talk about baffle plates. They're called other things like diverters or diffusers or shadow plates or tuning plates. You know, we got all these different names for it, but essentially they all are a baffle. And we're going to talk today about, like, first of all, what is a baffle? Second thing we're going to talk about is when do we use them? And the third thing we're going to talk about is some of the other hidden benefits of uh, these baffles in our smokers. So the first kind of baffle we're going to talk about is uh, like a heat sink type. And so you'll find a heat sink type baffle. Each baffle has a specific purpose, but it might do three different things, but one of them is the biggest reason it's in there. So like for instance, on a reverse flow smoker, this is what we actually have named a baffle plate, right? On the, on a reverse flow smoker, its primary mission is a heat sink. What we're trying to do is, is absorb the heat, the dead blow of the heat from the firebox throat opening when the products of combustion comes out of the firebox and it hits the bottom of that plate We're trying to get that plate to absorb as much heat as we possibly can so that it can radiate evenly upward across there. And also the air, the heat that's left in the air mass can uh, work together with the heat that's coming up out of the baffle plate and even out the cook chamber temp left to right. So that would be a heat sink type. But that same baffle plate can also work as an air diverter, which is our second type of baffle plate. So like we said, we're trying to direct this air mass in a pattern where it goes all the way to one side of the cook chamber under the plate, and then it comes back up and reverses direction and comes all the way back towards the firebox. This way we've established a convection pattern through throughout the entire cook chamber that's going to give us that even temperature left to right. That would be also called an air diverter type. So there's another kind, which is called a restrictor. The restrictor type baffle plate is where we're going to try to slow down the air mass. This works especially in a vertical application, like a uh, ugly drum smoker, for instance. We're going to try to slow that air mass, the, the mass of air, the volume of the air. We're gonna try to keep it in one place longer and we're gonna, it's going to feel like it might be moving faster, but really that's the velocity of a much lower portion of that air. Think about air like uh, a bucket, a five-gallon bucket full of water. Since, air, since we've all talked about this in the past, it's a fluid. It moves the same as liquid would move. It has uh, a flow pattern. It uh, goes the easiest path it can find, like as in a river. We can pump it. We can push it. We can use something to move it with, you know, like uh, a fan. So in this case, what we're doing is, is we're trying to control that air mass and make it go uh, a certain direction at a certain rate. So our three types of baffles we're, we're using here are heat sink, air diverter, and restrictive. When do we use these baffles? They're all different. They're all, they all have different applications, you know, Let's talk about direct fired. So direct fired is where our heat source, our fuel, is directly under the area that we're cooking in. For instance, a vertical smoker or a uh, um, an ugly drum smoker. So we've got our heat source in the bottom of the ugly drum smoker or vertical cooker, and we put a baffle in there so that you know when juice drips down on the fire, we don't get a flare up. We have um, depending on what air temp or what temperature you're cooking at, we want to try to prevent the the direct heat coming straight up off of the fire basket, off of that fuel, and hitting the bottom of our meat and giving us uneven color or a burnt bottom, 
or prevent us from having to flip and rotate a whole bunch. We want to we want to make the cooking process as easy as possible. So that we would use uh, heat sink and the restrictor type baffle plate in that application. Um, look at our different ones that we make for the ugly drum. For instance, we've got the adjustable pinwheel damper, and then we make the uh, super tuner baffle that has the the tuning uh, ability in it, where we can open and shut by bending a piece of metal. We can bend that piece of metal on the super tuner and open and shut a gap, which is going to help us get that control. Or on the pinwheel damper, we can we can twist the the two plates in opposite directions or together and uh, open and shut the pinwheel the open damper area there to to control that gap. That's the uh, direct fired application. So on the the uh, intake or combustion air path, for instance. We make on the ugly drums, it's easier to talk about ugly drums here because we've got so many different components that we make that that helps to explain the, the uh, different uses. Um, in this case, we're talking about the heat shield. So our heat shield is designed in a way that when the air comes in the air intake, the air doesn't just go straight to one corner of the charcoal basket. The air comes into the drum from one side or two sides, however many air inlets you put in there, and then it's going to have to split up between a couple of different paths. The The fire basket is going to draw from the easiest place combustion area can get. But this is going to get an opportunity so that it can be it can be sort of uh, dispersed around the charcoal basket. And we do that with holes around the bottom. So we're controlling the path of the combustion air. But when our baffle plate is laid on top of the heat shield, it prevents air from just coming in and just naturally drafting up with the heated air mass, which anytime you've got a hot air mass rising in something, it's going to pull with it as much cold air as it can because it's the easiest path. And so we block that off with that baffle plate around the outside of the heat shield to prevent that. So we're using a system of baffles in here on the combustion air side as well as on the inside of the heat shield, we have a block off plate that fits around our charcoal basket. Now, when the air comes into the area past the heat shield, and it, it could potentially go straight up to the baffle plate, and we've prevented that because we've got a block off plate in there. Now that air only has one path to go. In order for it to go up, it has to go through the charcoal basket. That's the only place it can go. So, I've done stuff like this similar, like in Luan, for instance. It's it's a huge firebox, four foot by four foot, you know, footprint. So for the, the air to come in that one air inlet at the front end of the where the door is, it could just get sucked in there and go anywhere inside of that firebox if if we didn't have a a way to direct it. So we put a series of baffles in a square pattern around the outside perimeter of the firebox and put the log rack dead center in the middle of that, that baffle system to where now we've got a smaller log rack, but we've blocked off all the free area around where we want our fire to be built. Now all the air has to go through the coal bed. It doesn't have any choice. So that would be on the intake or combustion air path, how we're controlling that, uh, that air mass using uh, baffles or air diverters in this case. Now we're going to talk about temp zone tuning. So uh, the other place that we would use this is for, say, in a uh, offset smoker. In a traditional offset smoker, you've got a firebox on, on the right-hand side of your cook chamber. You've got a horizontal cook chamber. And on the, the left-hand side, we've got a smokestack. For instance, in Oklahoma Joe or Brinkman or whatever brand you buy, Old, con old Country, I think they're called, whatever kind you buy, like at the local hardware store or, or whatever, in those kind of pits, this firebox opening, the throat that comes into the cook chamber, it's pretty good size, and it comes in directly on one side, and the air mass is expected to go through the cook chamber to the other side, away from the firebox, and then go out the smokestack. In this case, we're going to use two things. We're going to use uh, temp zone tuning, using a baffle and also we want that baffle to add some restriction so in in other words what's going to happen is we don't need this giant mass of air going into that very small pit 
So we're going to try to restrict that air mass down using this baffle plate, and we're going to put holes in it, let's say. Or we might put several pieces of plate in the cook chamber and, and have a small gap towards the firebox and a larger gap between those plates at the other end. So in this, in this case, that's going to allow us to move plates around or control the size of our holes in the baffle plate, very small on one side and very large on the other. And uh, that's going to allow us to control our temperature zone um, throughout the pit and use restriction to try to slow that mass of air down. So we don't need to move a ton of air when we say convection in a cook chamber. We don't have to move a ton of air in order to have convection. We just need that air pattern to move in a certain pattern throughout the cook chamber to give us a more even cook temperature. So some of the hidden benefits here of, uh, of baffles, of course, there's grease collection. So in a reverse flow smoker, for instance, or a vertical smoker that's got a water pan in it, you're, you're going to get the ability to collect all of the juice and the grease and things like that in a pan where you can drain those out easily. They're, they're, they can be... They can be great and they can kind of suck too because sometimes you got to scrape and they're hard to clean or whatever. But in the reverse flow smokers, we've often found that it's easiest just to scrape them off while before all the grease and everything, uh, you know, hardens up. You know, fuel efficiency is gigantic. We add these baffles in there, like for instance, in the ugly drums, we can get up to, you know, it's routine. It's like without even trying, we can get a 20 hour burn if you use the right combination of baffles and uh, you know how to run your drum. But I have literally gotten 30 some hours of, of cook time off of one 12 by 12 basket of charcoal. So that being said, that's amazing. I don't know what we would cook for 38 hours. That's, you know, kind of unnecessary, but still it's, it's, it's cool for us geeks that like to tune pits and stuff like that to know, you know, what our capacity is. So, you know, fuel efficiency is a huge added benefit to using these baffles and stuff like that. And then the other thing is, is it's going to take the edge off operation of your pit. It's going to make it so easy to operate this pit. It's going to be fun for you. We're, we're not going to go out there and fight this thing every time we want to cook. Nobody wants to fight a pit when they're, you know, wanting to cook barbecue for their family and friends. They want to go out there and just fire this thing up and, and they want to, you know, depending on their level of, uh, you know, arsonist <laughs> and um, how bad they want to mess with fires, we want to geek around and play with the fire and do some fire management and tweak on the pit a little bit every 45 minutes or so. But, you know, we want to take off the, the, take all the guesswork out of running the pit. And so that really makes a difference for the ease of operation of your pit. So, hey, if you have more questions about uh, this topic or anything like that, you can always hit us up on Messenger. Go to smokerbuilder.com on Facebook and hit us on Messenger. But I tell you what, I've got a, I've got a special thing here I really haven't talked about on the podcast. Right now, we're giving away a free set of smoker plans. Um, what I would like to see you do, if you don't mind, because I, I want to see as many of these pits get built as possible, go over to www.smokerplans.com. The link is also in the description of this podcast. Um, go over there, and uh, it's free plus shipping. Basically, the, the plans themselves, we've been selling this set of plans for a lot of years. We have over 200 sets of plans. But the plans, we've been selling those, the normal retail value of that is $79. So the plan itself, we're giving you that for free, right? All you got to do is pay a shipping and handling fee of $12.95. Get this set of plans in your hands and watch for a yellow box on the order form when you put in your shipping information and stuff. There's a yellow box. Make sure and click that box because that's going to get you the foundation package. That foundation package is all of the CNC files and all the material lists and everything to accompany that set of plans. So anyway, go over. You got to type the www in, by the way, to get to the right website, www.smokerplans.com. Thanks, guys. Build a pit, light a fire. Show me some pictures of what you're cooking and what you're building. I'd love to see it. Smokerbuilder.com. See ya.